great boys and girls. You know this is an honor and a privilege. I'm interviewing six-time All-Star, three-time Cy Young winner, three-time champ, Jim Palmer. How you doing, Jim? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. Tell them who I used to be. Okay. Well, no, you know I mean, great, great broadcaster now, yeah, well, everything, great. Even, I'm better when they win, of course. Even more great human being. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, during my generation, I grew up in an era where there was this Atlanta big three of, you know, Glavin, Smoltz, and Greg Maddox, of course. And you played with two other guys, you know, Mike and Dave. Can you talk about those guys and what they meant to you? Well, I, it was always very comforting. Um, you know, when I got to the Orioles at 19, I uh, roomed with Robin Roberts. Now, Robin was 38 on his way to Cooperstown. He ended up winning, I think, 286 games. You know, he had, I think, 607 lifetime uh, starts. He had 305 complete games. So, obviously, uh, you know, he completed more than half of the games he started. Uh, you know, he won 23, 25, 26 games. So, I kind of learned from him. And then, uh, you know, I would hurt my arm and, you know, I missed about a year and a half. And when I would come back, we traded for Mike Cuellar in 1969. Uh, he would win a Cy Young that year. He would win, I think, 23 games. Dave McNally won 20 games, four straight years. You know, I, I won 16 that year because I had hurt my back. And then in, in 70, and uh, you know, we, we had three 20-game winners, uh, Dave McNally and uh, Mike Cuellar and myself. And uh, 71, Pat Dobson came over from San Diego. We all were able to win, uh, you know, four of us won won the uh, Cy, uh, not Cy Young Awards because I don't mean, think none of us won the Cy Young Award in 71 but we had 72 complete games you know and, and during that period we won 109, 108, and 101 ball games so it was a you know it was a very good time we had a lot of great position players you know we had Frank Robinson and Wright and Don Buford one of the best lead off guys Paul Blair would go on to win eight gold gloves in center and Belanger and Davey Johnson and Boot Powell. I mean, we just, you know, we kind of had all-stars at pretty much every position. So it was a pretty good team to, to pitch for. And, uh, you know, the comfort of pitching on a great staff is if you don't win on Monday, one of those other guys is going to win on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. All right, not only did you have a great teammate, you had one of the greatest managers in baseball history, and Earl Weaver. Can you talk about Mr. Weaver and what he taught you during the course of time? Well, he taught me that the slider, because that's something he could never hit, was the best pitch in baseball. Mm. You know, now if you look at, you know, we, we kind of come here, here we are in 2019, maybe Earl had something that we, you know, that I didn't understand because I, I mean, I had a good slider, but I didn't throw it that much because it was tough on my elbow. But, um, uh, you know, Earl and I had that one of those love-hate relationships, uh, but he gave me the ball every fourth day. He wanted me to be perfect. I, I couldn't quite pull that off all the time. I did have some really good years. But, um, you know, we won. I mean, you know, uh, Earl would tell us in spring training we had a good chance to win if we play as a team and we use our 40-man roster, and we usually did. And, uh, you know, probably averaged, while well, he was with the Orioles, something like 95 wins a, a year. So, uh, you know, it's nice to go to spring training knowing you have a chance to get in the postseason. It didn't happen every year, but it certainly had often enough to, you know, get him to the Hall of Fame. He was, uh, you know, he was one of the first guys that kept stats. He used to, on the road, they had to change the, uh, the rules uh, when – when we would start uh, a game on the road, he would put Royal Stillman, a right fielder at shortstop. He'd pinch hit really with a pinch hitter to lead the game off and then put Belanger in for defense. They changed the rules of baseball where you actually have to assume a defensive uh, uh, place in, on the field. So, you know, Earl was a little bit before his time. Uh, you know, he you know, he was he was tough, but again, he was a winner. And uh, I think that's why we all play, enjoyed playing for him. Are there any players today or just even from a generation before this, were there any guys that reminded you of yourself that you saw on the mound or just like the work ethic and things of that nature? Well, there's a lot of really, I mean, really good pitchers. I mean, if you look at, you know, Kershaw, even though he's had some shoulder problems or back problems, um, you know, he was a dominant pitcher. Um, you know, he had Linsicum for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, a little guy, very slight. I mean, there have been a lot of great pitchers. I mean, I, you know, when I got in the Hall of Fame, I just, you know, I, I, in my speech, I just said the only reason I tried to be um, as good as I was was because of the guys sitting behind me. And, you know, I mean, at that particular time, I mean, Ted Williams was there, usual, and DiMaggio, I mean, you know, Mickey Mantle, people like that. So uh, it was pretty, you know, a pretty select group, Bob Feller, and, uh, you know, Robin Roberts, of course, got to the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. early win. I mean, some of the greatest pitchers, Koufax. So they set the standard, and I think for a young player, that's pretty much what you want to do, just you know, come up, uh, you know, money's certainly much more uh, available now than it used to be. But at the end of the day, it's really about what you do between the white lines. So we have a lot of good young players and, um, uh, you know, whether, you know, it's Machado who was here for seven years now in San Diego or Mike Trout who, uh, you know, plays every game like he really enjoys it. So, again, I, I still think baseball is a great game. It's changed a little bit, but, you know, 
very simple. Cal Ripken Sr. told me when I was 18 years old, it's a, who gets one more run than the other team? And uh, that's what it's really what the game is, is about. It's if you want to be a good player, just uh, beat the other team that you're trying to play. Who was your idol growing up? I mean, like, who was Mickey the Mickey Mantle. Oh, you're from New York, Mickey right? Man. So yeah, Mickey I Mantle. grew up in New York, and I was a Yankee fan. And um, I used to run out and get the paper because he used to play doubleheaders every Sunday. So, uh, you know, my most traumatic year was 1954 when the, the Indians uh, beat the Yankees for the pennant and then lost four straight in the World Series. I figured the Yankees could have done better than that. But I always thought I wanted to be a Yankee. Never, never happened. But I did end up winning 30 games against him as a starting pitcher. So it, things worked out pretty well in Yankee Stadium. All right, last question. Who, you know, you went against the big red machine. You went against, I, can't, I mean, like baseball, what I consider baseball guys from my time. Who would you consider the most feared hitter that you faced? Well, it would have been Roberto Clemente. Wow. I mean, I faced Aaron, but not on a regular basis mm -hmm. when he was, and you know, more when, at the end of his career. Um, but when we played the, the Pirates in 71, we lost 2-1 to one in Game 7. And, you know, Roberto was the most valuable player. I mean, he had 13 hits in the seven games. He hit home runs and triples and threw people out, stole bases. Um, the scouting report is, you know, you, you can go up and in, but don't ever go there again. Throw him a breaking ball, but don't ever do it twice. So he was a very tough out. He could hit the ball from over his head to, to his toes. And he, I still remember in the uh, 70, I guess 71 All-Star game, where all the home runs that were hit in Detroit, he hit a curveball off of uh, Mickey Lolich that hung a little bit into the upper deck over the 415 sign in right center field. And, you know, Reggie hit the transformer. I mean, I'll never yeah. forget that ball. I mean, there were, I think, six or seven home runs all by Hall of Famers. But just the way Clemente kept his bat back, got out on his front foot because he's fooled a little bit, and then hit it over 430 feet to the opposite field. That's pretty impressive. All right, appreciate you.